would be some of the things or the reasons why they should hire you or why they should work with an attorney or professional like yourself when they're getting ready to set up their businesses? Okay, so I think the importance of forming your LLC with some kind of professional is going to be, so it's just, it's done right. Um, you want to make sure that all your I's are dotted, all your T's are crossed. Um, this is basically going to be your, your, your legal structure. So you want everything to be done correctly. Um, you want to make sure that all your information is correct. You want to understand, you know, what it is that you have. So yes, you can freestyle it, but I think, you know, getting your LLC formed with a professional, um, an attorney, a CPA, someone, this is what they do is very important so that your, so that your foundation, you know, is, is on point. If your if your foundation is shaky, if you don't have something right, you got to, you know, now amend it. You just want to make sure that your foundation is solid. Right. And, I, and and we see this all the time online, right? People making these posts and po randomly posting just to right. do that, right? Right. Um, but the reason why we, we speak and, and say this when uh, working in your business, business is serious and you do want to make sure that things are set up properly because a lot of people just go and set up an LLC, but there's other factors that go along with that business structure correct outside of the paperwork of correct to your correct and that's, you know um you guys that we're trying to really address here is yes the paperwork part can, can be set up yes you can go to your secretary and state right and do that, but there are certain structures um when it comes to setting up companies outside of llc whether it's a corporation or non-for-profit um there are certain structures and ways that the business should be kind of set up um and each individual business is different you guys so we say this all the time like there is no one size fit all right the ways businesses set up business goals and things are diff totally different from mine right so all of that plays a role when you are looking to put your business um, uh, on paper, right, we'll say. So outside of just the, um, you know, kind of the normal uh, ways that everybody does it, right, which is just, oh, let me set up this LLC on paper. Right. Like what else, Joy, would be um, something that they should consider before formally setting up their LLC or, or, or you know, or wanting to work with you? What are some of the things that, um, you know, uh, uh, I guess I don't want to just say only a business because I'm sure you work with other people. That's just that's not only entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, the question just went completely out of my head. <laughs> you were saying you were saying like what else do they need to um, consider before forming their LLC? Right, right, right. So what's something else that they would kind of want to consider? Like we talked about the the different entities, right? So now let's maybe go into the, the contracts or things. Okay, like. okay. So, so once you... the business. Okay. Well, first of all, when you're forming your LLC, you want to make sure that whoever is going to be on the paperwork, that, you know, like, like this is really going to be your partner. I get a lot of, let me put my daughter on, let me put my cousin on the paperwork, and then a blowout happens, and then... You know, now we're trying to, you know, amend things, you know, all that. So it's kind of like, you know, get get your house in order. Know who you really want to be, you know, a part of your structure. Okay, so forming your LLC is going to be like the first part of starting your business. Okay, so now you got your legal structure together. Now we got to protect you and the legal structure. And you protect yourself and the legal structure one by following their formalities, the rules of having, you know, an, an entity. So the, S, the the corporation rules, the LLC rules. But you also need to have contracts in place to make sure that your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. Because something is going to happen. And out here in these business streets, it's grimy. Okay? So one contract that no matter what industry you're in, everyone needs to have is going to be an NDA or a non-disclosure agreement or also known as a confidentiality agreement. In the midst of your business, you are going to be meeting with other people, whether you're going to be talking to potential investors, 
whether you're going to be talking to um, other business owners, maybe we're, we're going to do a joint venture and like collab on something. Um, maybe you have uh, staff, employees, people who work with you. You don't want your your business secrets. You don't want how you run your business. You don't want um, where you're buying your merchandise, uh, who your clients are. You don't want all your stuff just to be exposed. And so an NDA says, hey, we in, in discussing, you know, maybe we're going to partner together while you're working here for my company, you may stumble upon some information that I don't want disclosed to outside people. So a non-disclosure agreement, every business owner needs to have to make sure that, you know, you're saying, hey, this information does not need to leave, you know, either our workplace. This information does not need to leave us. If you're talking with a potential investor, giving them your business idea and they have more money than you, they will just take your idea and run with it. So before you get out here in these business streets, you want to make sure that you're protected. When you have a contract and you don't want to Google a contract because contracts are state specific. So there's certain things that need to be in, um, there's certain language that needs to be in a contract and there's certain like legal mumbo jumbo that needs to be in there to make sure that you're protected. So you want to have an attorney drafted contract as you are entering into discussions, partnerships, whatever with other people. And then when you have someone sign a contract, it just kind of makes you look like, oh, she's on her stuff. So let me not cross her and, you know, let me, let me not play with her because, you know, she does have this, you know, this, this, this contract on file. So, you know, you, you know, you, you kind of want to let, let people know like, Hey, I, I'm serious. I know my rights. And if you play with me, you know, I'm going to see you in court. Yes. <laughs> so an NDA, non-disclosure, uh, confidentiality agreement, whatever you want to call it, you need to have one of those. If you are in business, you don't have one, you can go to my website, the firm, cbgroup.com, and you can get one of those uh, contract templates, okay? Um, the second contract that every owner needs to have is going to be a copyright transfer agreement. So copyright is basically, basically when someone creates something. So you may have someone create your logo. You may have someone create... Um, a video for your business. You may have someone take some pictures, you know, for your business. You may have someone create copyright content. So they're either writing an ebook, writing um, Instagram or social media content for you to post. Whoever creates the content owns the content. So you got to think about content and copyright like selling a home. You can't sell a home, you know, and shake someone's hand. Everything has to be in writing. So, you know, hey, I'm selling you the house, you know, for this amount of money, whatever are the issues with the house, you know, we're signing off on it, we're agreeing to the value, we're agreeing to the price, you know, you know, we're the the title company is there, you know, we're getting a deal. Like everything is in writing. Right. Same with copyright. Okay. So just because you pay someone to take your photos, you know, at your photo shoot. It's because you paid a videographer to come and, you know, do some videos to kind of showcase your business, your work. That does not mean that you owe, that you own them because you did not create it. If you have a person who's at your, um, at your business, who's coming up with copyright, coming up with writing, you know, different things, some um, social media posts, some blog posts, the ebook, although you're paying that person hourly or per project, whoever creates it owns it. And the only way you can transfer that ownership over is like a house in writing. So the copyright transfer agreement on my website, every person needs to have. So when you're going to a photo shoot, hey, you just give it to your photographer, you know, hey, here's a copyright transfer agreement. You don't have to be slick. You might have to kind of like slide it, like just be grown. Like, hey, you know, here's a copyright transfer agreement. You know, please read over it. This is saying that, you know, although I'm paying you, I now own the rights to whatever it is that, that you are making for me. If a person is a good business person, like if I'm making your logo, I shouldn't want to hold any rights to your logo. I should be willing to, you know, give that over to you. I should, oh, I, I'm going to charge you more for signing this contract. Mm, well, now your business practice is is all the way off, okay? So a copyright transfer agreement, um, every 
business owner needs to have. If you are working with anyone, so an independent contractor agreement, uh, letting them know that, hey, although you're working with me, you know, I, you are an independent contractor. So one, you are responsible for your own taxes. You don't want, you know, to be working with someone and you're just writing them a check. And then, you know, at the end of the year, when they find out, oh, you know, no taxes were withheld. You, you don't want them coming back to you acting like, oh, well, I thought I was an employee and, you know, right. you didn't pay my taxes. And they, you know, that they quit to call the IRS. And, you know, now, you know, now you got the, got the alphabet boys in the business, you know, you just, you want them to have a, you want to have a contract saying like, hey, we're on the same page. You don't, we work together, so, but you are not my employee. So if you're hiring someone to do anything for your business that is not like an employee relationship, they need to be signing an independent contractor. In that independent contractor agreement, you can also put different clauses in there like a non-solicitation clause. So that means you can't come over here to my business and try to talk to my clients or my employees. So let's just say, let me give a good example off the dumb of my head. If I hire a photographer to come on set and, you know, take pictures, let's say I have an online boutique, they're going to come on, do a photo shoot, it's going to be maybe me and three models, we're, you know, taking pictures of the clothing that we have on us, he can't talk to the models and try to have them come now with him to go work somewhere else, you know, so if you're coming to, if you're coming to work for me or coming to work with me, however you want to say it, then let's just keep everything professional, don't contact my staff, don't contact anyone that's working with me. Don't contact any of my customers. Like, you just come in, do your job, and leave. Um, in the independent contractor agreement, sometimes you may have someone working in your business that's not an employee, okay? So maybe they're coming in maybe a couple of days a week. Maybe they have access to your, your database, your customer files, whatever the case may be. You don't want them, you know, copying that. And the, let's, so let's say I I come to you, Patrice. I'm going to be maybe for uh, two days a week, you know, helping you be an assistant, you know, call some of your clients. And I'm like, oh my God, this money Patrice got coming up in here. So she does taxes and bookkeeping. I think I can do the same thing. So it would be a lot easier for me to start my business if I just take her whole database and just say, hey, I knew you was going to Patrice, but guess what? I can do the same thing and I'm going to do it cheaper. And then I try to start my business off your back. So you want a non um a non-compete clause in your contract with the independent contractor. Like, you know, you want to go ahead and start your business. Great. You know, go, go for it. But you got to start from the bottom like everyone else. You can't start, you know, already with my database because, you know, that's the most important part of a business. So a non-disclosure copyright transfer agreement and an independent contractor agreement, I would say would be the most, would be the top three agreements that every business owner needs to have. So we, we do have a couple of questions. So okay. Oh, so they want to know what's your website again. I'm going to type it in. Okay. My website is the firm CB group. So the firm C is in cat, B is in boy group .com. Okay. I'm typing that in for you all right now. And then um, we have a question that says, how do you ask someone to sign a contract? Okay, so you ask someone how to ask someone how to sign a contract. Hi, how you doing? So you are designing my logo. Thank you so much. You know, just to make sure that we're on the same page, I want you to sign this copyright transfer agreement. All it's saying is that you're transferring your ownership into the logo that you created into me. It's something simple and very customary in this industry. Now, in my, in my contracts on my website, I will give you the contract template, but I will also give you a contract, an explanation contract. So every paragraph I have in green what it's saying. So when you're when you are discussing it with someone, you actually know what it's saying. If it's like some legal mumble jumble that's protecting you, like don't don't change this. <laughs> Leave this just like it is, but this is blah, 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 blah. 
if a person has an issue signing a contract, that needs to be your first uh, red flag as to this person doesn't understand business. This person's not going to be on the up and up with business, okay? Because in any kind of business, in business sphere, you're signing a contract. When you go to the dentist, you have to sign your life away. Hey, something may happen. I may kill you. You still want to get these veneers? I sure do. Bam. You about to have liposuction. Hey, you may die on the table. You good? I'm good. Like in anything you do, you are signing your life away. You go to Disneyland, you about to sign a waiver. If I fall off this ride, you know, like in any kind of business transaction, you are signing a contract so that we're both on the same page. And a lot of people do not really realize that. Like like you said, even going to the doctor's appointment. Right. And that paperwork, that check-in, and in that fine print that a lot of you are not reading is saying stuff like that. Correct. And it's protecting uh, the business. And I'm so glad that you stated that because this is another reason why we get on here. TikTok, just want to let you all know, uh, we are uh, streaming so I'm not answering any questions on TikTok. You can go over to the YouTube channel, which is Patrice L. Stewart, and then you can get your questions answered that way. So if you come on over to the YouTube channel, then you can get your questions answered and we can see them live right now. Um, I'm allowing you guys on here for a little while, but then we're going to cut you off. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, because this is actually for the lab members. Like I said, I share some of this content with you guys, but is really for the lab membership um so back to it but i want to one thing that you brought up that i really want to hone in on that people should be listening to um and i'm gonna just get this quick story time real quick okay so i started a business when i first like left corporate america um i ended up getting a small office and i met this i met this guy i didn't know him really right but I was like, oh, okay, he's cool. We kind of do the same thing. So we ended up opening up the tax office together, right? Um, and then I learned over that two years of being in that office with him, like his work ethic was nothing like mine. Mm -hmm. I thought I did business, everything. Like we were not a good fit, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I was trying to be like cool and like, okay, well, I'll wait to leave this tax season you know, I'll let him know I'm going to leave this last tax season. We're going to separate. So every year I take a vacation at the end of the year. Left and never came back. Not, left my computer and did not change my password because we both knew each other's kind of you know, mm -hmm. password on the computer, right? The man downloaded my database, downloaded my database with all of my tax clients because we had separate clients. He had his own clients. Mm -hmm. I had my own and downloaded my database and literally to this day some of my clients say they still get a text message from him Dude. the way he, he started texting my clients saying <laughs> come to me i'm cheaper like you said i'm cheaper than patrice like so unethical right i was so heated like i was ready to go and do the hood right right, right. what's up i'm like dude like right cousins up there all type of stuff right, right. And so I have to say, okay, Patrice, you are a professional. This is, we have to take this as a learning experience, right? And so like you said, now moving forward uh, with any projects or people that I decide to work with, I have to have these contracts. Right. In place. And I'm very um, shielded now. In Correct. Guarding my information. That's why it's taking me so long to hire people because I don't. Right, them. right. Because it's. Yeah. Everyone doesn't do business. Everyone doesn't understand the value of business. Like, let me have a good rapport with you and we can do, I would rather make a little bit of money for a long time with someone, but most people, they want to have a hundred percent. I want to take it all. And it's like, it's, it's, you're going to see out here, like everyone doesn't understand business. So the contracts are really to be put in place to, to put boundaries, sometimes you may get into, uh, I don't know, a partnership, a collab with someone, and you realize we just aren't a fit. Like, it's no shade to you, no shade to me. Like, we just, we just kind of move differently. So it's also very important that in your contract, 
you have um, a termination clause. Like, how can we get out of this? Like, how you can divorce someone when you're like, mm, I thought it was going somewhere, but, but we're not. Like, how do I get out of bed with you? Because everyone's, everyone's work ethic isn't the same. Everyone's vision isn't the same. And you don't want to get in bed with someone. And then you feel like you're stuck with them. So contracts just kind of just keep everything on on the up and ups so that we're all on the same page like no one feels like well they get no you just want to you know you just want to kind of just have a good working relationship with everyone you're with and then also have boundaries and and expectations so hey you know let's not do this and let's not do that but it it is very grimy out here and you know once you get like like one good dog bite in you'd be like mm, now i see why okay now i see okay now i see why okay mm -hmm. i can see this other question we do have another question. okay we'll see if you want to ask this so she, um the young lady says i would like to start a t-shirt business alone and i'm not sure how it will go would you recommend getting an llc now or seeing how things go first I always, okay, so the question is, do I start the business and then get the LLC or should I get the LLC now? I always say get the LLC now because one, you want to at least reserve your business name with your state. So there's no need to, if you're going to start a business, and when I say start, I mean like you're about to go get a logo, you're about to go get a website, you're about to go invest in some inventory. You know, if you're about to actually start the business then you need to have an LLC because anytime you're doing any kind of transactions, you're now, you know, exposing yourself to, you know, to, to other liabilities. Now, if you're just thinking about getting a business, you want to research, you're not sure what industry you want to be in, that's different. But once you start saying, hey, I want to go ahead and, you know, sell something to the public, you know, you really want to go ahead and separate what the business is doing versus you. Also, if you're doing any kind of um, international business, so I don't know if you're going to get your t-shirts made here in the U.S. or if we're going to go on like a Alibaba, AliExpress, kind of, you know, bring them from China in here because they'd be a little cheaper. You know, dealing with foreigners with a branded email versus a Gmail account or a Yahoo or your personal email, you will get better rates, you'll get better quotes, but they're gonna, you know, look at you as a real business versus, um, you know, just thinking that they're dealing with like a little fly by night individual. Okay, that's a great, great, great. And, I, and you did say that the last time we did do one. Cause I know I used to tell people like, if you kind of doing a hobby or you hustling on the side, Right, but like you said, once you once you're actually investing money in, you're paying for a logo, you're right? Paying for a website, you're paying for inventory. Then, baby, you are a business, and you should be set up as one. Right. So, I have a question on this side. It says, when you are when you form your LLC, should you put the type of business that you're going to do, or just keep it general? I always say, just keep it general, like for any lawful purpose, because. Let's say I do start a t-shirt business and I call it Joyce Tees, okay? Well, I may not do t-shirts anymore, but I may do something else. You can always amend an LLC. You can always change the name of an LLC. Um, so you don't have to make the LLC specific to one industry. You can just kind of have a general LLC not saying run 10 DBAs, you know, under this one LLC. But when you're forming your LLC, you can just make it for a general reason for any lawful purpose, you know. So therefore, you can do different things with the LLC. Right, because you did speak about that too, that you don't uh, recommend having all of these different Correct, names, correct. DBAs under one LLC. Correct. Because like you said, if I have a hair salon, but then I'm doing nails on the side. Correct have a nail business and both of them together now that if something happens in the hair business not right the business now included right because you both of them under that one llc correct hey arnetta <laughs> um okay so we don't i think we went through all the questions that are on there so let me see what other 
Africa. We went over contracts. We went over LLC. Well, Joy, is there anything else that maybe you want to share outside of, let me see. So we talked about the contracts. Okay. One of the things that you did say too was with the um, copywriting, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot, a lot of you are, oh no, let's do this. We, we, well, we talked about that. We'll just recap it. If you're just coming in, like she said, if you if you have a, um, let's say you're just getting a logo or you're getting video content film, right? Um, if you're not aware, the people who created that owned your content, right? Um, pretty much because they created it. Correct. So they basically, I, I saw an article or something about that recently. Like someone was selling their company and the person who designed the logo ended up coming in and wanting like a percentage of that. The that is going to be um, salt. Saltwater Brewery. There's a um and and a beer company out in Atlanta. Thirty years ago, a family friend drew their logo and they paid him five hundred dollars. Well, it. now um, the company just sold for I think three hundred million dollars. So the family friends like, oh well, you know when when there's something called goodwill and there's you. Like the McDonald's logo. If I put that logo up on a business, people are going to come without even having the word McDonald's because that that logo means something. It's called goodwill. You can't really put a price point on it. It's just that logo means something. That Chick-fil-A little chicken, like logos mean something because you related to the brand, the Nike swoosh. So the the cut the family friend who made the logo is like well hold on you know I now want thirty million dollars because I'm the one that created that logo so now that I'm selling my company for you know three hundred million dollars if I'm now trying to run back hey y'all can you sign this contract well yeah now you're about to get hustle yeah I'll sign it for thirty million you know but when you start now and don't nobody know you and you know, all your little stuff is bootleg and you know, you just trying to make it and don't no one care about giving away their rights because you know, you aren't, you are small, you're nothing. They don't see, you know, they don't see what you're really about to be. So it's not going to be a problem. So that's why it's always important to set everything up correctly. You know, get your LLC done correctly you don't want to you know have a lawsuit in place or someone suing you and then you feel and then you realize oh on this form you know i checked the wrong box well my cousin and them see and i should well you know now that it's like now it's too late you know and it's like to save 250 you now looking at you know a loss over three hundred thousand dollars is it worth it either you're gonna pay now or you're gonna pay later but you're gonna pay you gonna pay either or it is always gonna be cheaper to pay it up front versus so when you first get your logo here's the contract before you send the money to the logo guy here's the contract hey you know my attorney always advised me you know to have you sign this copyright transfer agreement before you get the website done you know here's the contract before um, the person is you know doing your photos for your photo shoot here's the like list keep it up front like don't slide it in just keep it up front and the question i have is the um the top three contracts going to be the nda or the non-disclosure agreement a copyright transfer assignment agreement and then an operating i'm not operating a um independent contractor agreement but you have everyone sign this up front okay before the person comes to work with you sign it up front so that way, you know, before you tell your great idea to this investor, mm, 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 sign this up front. And if anyone's, you know, oh, I'm going to get, once you see them backpedaling with that contract, because people know what contracts mean. People know I will nail your, I will nail your ass to the cross with this contract. So if they start, you know, shucking and jiving, then you already know right then and there, oh, let me not let let me not sell you this money from my logo because I know it's about to be an issue. Let me not have you do my um photo or, or I'm gonna charge you more now because you're gonna own the content. Well, honey, it's <laughs> yes, like that's what I want. So you 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 just wanna be you you wanna know when you hand in this contract 
if they're not above ground, you're going to see it. And so you need to just go on ahead and go to the next person. Now, if you've already gotten your logo, you already got your photos, you already got things done, still slot in the contract. If they don't want to sign it, you got to just make it do what it do and just move on. But it's always best to do this, you know, in the beginning. So those will be the top contract. But the, that copyright transfer agreement is what you want to get now, especially if you're a new business because no one's going to be worried about your logo. When you sell for $300 million, they're going to be, they're going to come out the woodworks, you know, at that point in time. And a social fiber, it doesn't matter. So still, it doesn't matter who you have. Correct. So just because. So you can just email them the contract. Um, I have a clause in the contract to where, you know, if you're emailing someone the contract, they won't be able to sign the same contract that you have. But I have a clause in there that says, hey, as long as you sign one, one version of it, it's still good. So you want it even on Fiverr, you know, you pay them $30, whatever, you know, hey, here's, here's the contract that I need signed. Then to answer the other question, if you do change your name of your LLC, you will then need to get a new EIN number. And in getting the EIN number, that is where you choose what industry you're in. And the industry that you're in is what can affect you uh, when you start talking about business credit and you know your industry because there are high risk industries. So you want to make sure that you choose a general industry like consulting management you don't want to be uh real estate you don't want to be you know transportation logistics you want to make sure that you keep your the industry that you're in real general also it's like i'm am i frozen because you frozen patrice mm -hmm. I just, you just froze, but I think it's my internet. Okay. My, my internet. Okay. Okay. Well, let me see what questions I got. Hey, y'all. Because she's froze. I need to do my LLC. Okay, I got you. I get along. Okay. Okay. Can you run? I have another question, Patrice. Can you hear me, Patrice? Yes, I hear you and see you again. Okay. So I have. Can I run two D two two D two DBAs under one LLC? No. Okay. The only reason why you have a DBA is if you want to go by a different name than what your LLC name is. So some people may have like a general. LLC name. So I may call myself, you know, Joy Enterprises, but I'm doing business as, you know, Joy's Lashes. You don't have one LLC and then you have a whole bunch of other DBAs. That that defeats the purpose of even having an LLC. Okay. So each business that you do needs to have its own LLC. Besides protecting your assets, Besides reserving your business name in the state that you're in, because the DBA is nothing, you now can establish business credit on all of the. In where, where, where are my cups? Hold on, let me get my cup. We don't come. We don't come. If we gonna do it, let's just do it. Okay. So. Okay, so here's LLC number one. Okay, now you want to have a t shirt company and a record label, and you're going to rent your cars, and you're going to do all this in this one LLC. So only this one LLC can go to the bank, only this one LLC can apply for a credit card. Then when something happens with maybe one, with one issue, 
all of your business assets, all of your business money, everything you got going on is tied up into one company. So let's just say my t-shirt company is new, but my record label is banging, you know, um, my Turo business is banging, but maybe I had a contract dispute with someone who did, um, who did some some t-shirts for mine and now you know we're in court and they got a judgment against me they can now touch my record label money they can now touch my Turo money they can touch everything because you have it in one LLC because you save that money and you save that $200 filing fee and you pay $30 and got you a DBA and you're doing everything in one now when you set yourself up for success, LLC number one. So now we got LLC number two, okay? Where's my LLC number three cup? Now come on, would you like it together? We're gonna call this. So now I got my record label, I got my Turo, I got my T-shirt, okay? Now I have three people walking into the bank. Now I have three people getting a credit card. Now I have three people getting a line of credit. Now I have three people walking in, you know, to Ford or to Toyota to, you know, get a, a business vehicle in the business name, you know. Now if I, if I have a contract dispute over here with the t-shirts, it ain't messing with this money. It ain't messing with this business. It ain't got nothing to do with this. I only have one, I have one little man down. And he gonna be up in a second, but so it's like you gotta. Either we gonna hustle or we gonna do a business. And the problem is, especially us, we wanna hustle. We wanna do the bare minimum. But the second we hear about some money, oh, how can I get some funding? You got an LLC? No, no, I got a DBA. I got an EI. And maybe you have an LLC. Like in business, it's LLCs and biz, it's business bank account with money in the bank. Well, see, I do cash app and it's, it's like either we going to run a business or you're going to ride, run a side hustle. Anyone you do is cool. But if you're going to, if you're going to side hustle Sally your way, just, just stay side hustle Sally. Don't go to the bank. Don't look for loans. Don't ask for a grant. Don't ask for no credit not using your personal social. Don't don't come over here. Just stay over here with your cash apps and your Zells and your DBAs. Just stay right over there inside. You ain't paying no taxes. You ain't tripping. You good. Over on the business side, you're going to write the IRS a check, okay? Ain't no seven-figure business not writing the IRS a check. You're going to write the IRS a check. You're going you're gonna to pay credit card fees. You're going to pay banking fees. But you get to walk into the bank with multiple people. You get to get a line of credit. You get to get credit. You get other, you get other benefits when you act like a business. But it's going to cost you money. It's not going to be free. You got to pay for things. You got to have comps. You got to have a whole lot of stuff here on that business side. But business, you know, business, there are a lot of benefits for business. So when you are forming your LLC, that's the first step. When you get your EIN, that's the second step. Now, when forming your LLC, your name is important, especially if you're going to be in a high risk industry, okay? Your name's important because. If you put the high risk industry name in your business name, that's going to affect how much line of credit you can get. Okay. Trucking companies, high risk. Okay. High risk means that you are prone for bankruptcy based on your industry. Okay. Trucks going out of business all day, every day. Trucks are large liability. Okay. You're about to crash and kill somebody. So, you know, when you, when you have logistics in your name, when you have trucking in your name, just know when you walk into that bank, you know, the amount of money that they're going to want to give you is going to be a little less. Okay. Now, if you already have that, you know, it's already in your name. There are things we can do to get around that. But 
any kind of high risk industry. If you have a strip club, okay, you know, the sex industry is a high risk industry. Um, credit repair, you know, high risk. Car dealerships, high risk. So you can mask it by having a general name and then using a DBA to use. Like if I have, I have a car dealership, okay, if I have Joy Motors, it kind of tells what I do. Versus if I have Joy Enterprises, and then just get a DBA to be doing business as Joy Motors, that'd be a little different. But you wanna make sure that we're cautious of if I'm in a high risk industry, am I gonna mask my name? Or I can set up a parent company, another company to kind of run the whole business credit play with so that I can you know, maximize the amount of funding I can get when it comes to business credit. I hope y'all taking notes, baby, because Joy just gave you all the <laughs> said, yeah. I'm Sorry. No, I'm on a Zoom. No, mommy's saying I'm on a Zoom. Okay, let's see the other question I had. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Are you on this person? I'm on both, and now you're on. How does it work with freelance workers such as Fiverr? Okay, for Fiverr, you will still send the copyright transfer agreement to them. He's frozen. Can you see me, Patrice, or am I still frozen on your side? No, I see you. Okay. You got some questions on your side? I'm going through... Um. Can you text so me the chat? Do, um, right. Arnetta says, if someone has a side hustle business, <sighs> they'll cause this injury or assets. Yes, in a nutshell, right? Because they don't have an LLC. Correct. So if another reason why you don't want to do business as a DBA, that means that you're doing business. Okay, so, okay, Arnetta. Your business doesn't have no money, okay? So here's your business. It'll have no money. It's brand new. But I bet you, you have a bank account. I bet you, you have a car. I bet you, you have a savings account. I bet you, you have a house. I bet you, you may have some jewelry, okay? So when you're a DBA, you are doing business with all of your personal assets exposed. So, if something goes wrong with your DBA, forget going to the business. They're going right to you. they suing you personally. they coming after your bank account. they come after your car, your house, your money, your savings, your 401k, your jewelry. They're coming after you. So, that's why I always say I don't care if the, the business is not going to make no money. Like, in, a, in, a, in the real world, it's going to take you about three, to, about three years to break even on a business depending you know you're a new entrepreneur you're more established it's gonna take you some years to break even we're not forming the llc you know for the business you're forming the llc so if this is me here's my business so something go wrong with this business keep me out of it keep my money out of it keep my savings account out of it keep my car my home so they suing you know my llc guess what at night i'm asleep I'm not stressed. I don't have ulcers. I don't have a heart attack. I'm not, you know, trying to tell my kids we're going to lose our house. I'm, I'm, I'm good because I have separated the two. When you have a DBA, you are exposing everything you have sacrificed and worked for out here in these business streets. So I don't care if the, if the business hasn't made a dime. The first thing I do, I have an idea, LLC. Because I'm not about to have you come over here and mess with, you know, Deuce's money. Like, if this is this is me and mommy. This is over here. Now, you, you can play over here with this, but if you are separating yourself from the business. That's the most important reason for forming an LLC and why you should form it in the very beginning. Makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. And I mean, if people, and, and again, some people, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. Some people going to do what they're going to do. Right. Uh, if you listen and you pay attention and this is something that you're really serious about, then this is 
you know, Joy is pretty much giving you the gem on how to set it up properly the right way. Right. Exactly, Tiffany. So you're touch your personal assets. Right. right. And that's why we both don't do the LLC. And then you can do a DBA under the LLC. But I just feel like a straight DBA is just a waste mm. of time. Well, you just save a little thirty dollars. Just save a little thirty DBA dollars. Okay, so if you all do have any questions that are watching, this is your time to get it in. We have about ten more minutes on. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Joy directly, then go ahead and type them in now. Um, new one, Joy, um, from Kim Sage. Can I cross over from? a sole proprietor to a LLC and how difficult. Uh, crossing over from a sole proprietor to an LLC is really just forming the LLC. You will form the LLC and you will need to get a new EIN because you just formed a new business entity, but it's, it's not hard. Can you get a swinger group made into an LLC? Yeah, pretty much what you're doing is you're just finally putting yourself on paper because when you're running it as a sole proprietor, that's that's exactly what you're doing is what she explained is you're running it as a DBA. Right. Know business as, but that's the same thing as a sole proprietor. Be paper. <laughs> so all of your personal assets are open and available right now. So what you're doing is actually setting it up on paper. So no, it's not finally putting the business on paper how it should be right and then you all also have to remember i'm the tax person so there are so many advantages to putting that company on paper right because when you're a sole proprietor you're running that business on a schedule c mm -hmm. now if you're a single member llc you're still running that business on the schedule c um, but you're still able to write off a little more because you actually have a legal business entity versus just being a sole proprietor. And then it's a whole other kind of tax write-off when you are an LLC that has the S-Corp attached to it. So um, that's why we say, again, you need to be working and talking to a professional with that you want to sit down with so that way we can understand your structure, your goal, you know, how much money you're looking to make. Right. That is in on your structure. This is what Joy is talking about, the foundation of how you're being set up. Um, so Blue Jay says, when is the best time to switch your LLC to an S-Corp? Um, so right, Joy, 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 you said more like 100000 Patrice, um, you, you say what, like 50000 I say you can do it at fifty, depending on, though. Depending on... The, the, the like, like if it's a servicing industry like what you know like what I do like what both of Joy and I do we're we're in a servicing industry right we provide a service now for people who are like in a product base where you're paying taxes and all kind of other things then I do feel like your income needs to be higher into that hundred kind of k but when you're in a service based kind of industry and you kind of can hold a lot of your income of cash flow, mm -hmm. like you for the income then again, this is why we have to have these sit downs and kind of go over. So again, and let's just also put this disclosure out here. Joy is an actual attorney, so she got the legal legality. But for me, I am giving you, and this is informational purposes only. I'm not giving you legal advice on here, right? This is informational purposes. If you do want to physically actually work with me and my company, then at that point, you know, we can go from there. But the information that we're providing for you all today is, is information, right? So this is not a one size fits all. Correct. And, and this is the reason too, why we always say this, why you want to sit down with a professional because every business owner is has her own goal and different. Like I said, Joy's goal for her business is going to be different than my right. business. So we set your businesses up based off of what your goal is. Okay. Let me um, let me let me say more about the S corp because like the S corp is everywhere on Instagram. Part of running a business, you need to have business advisors. Okay. So if you're if 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 I do hair, I'm good at I can slay hair. Like that's my thing. I'm good at hair. But you're not good at taxes. You're not good at 
business structuring. You're not good at like you're not good at a whole lot of other things that encompass business. So when you start running a business, the first thing you need to have besides I would say some kind of business coach. You ain't got to come to me, but go somewhere. Like how do I properly run the how do I properly run the business? Okay? Cuz you if you've never run a business before, how else are you going to learn how to run a business? The the first person I would say you need to go to is going to be a tax person. Okay? We got Patrice. Hey girl. So, how much money Cuz see we see how much money's coming in, and we go, like, "Oh, I'm making this money!" Boom, 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 baby. There is somebody called you have a silent business partner, and they're called the IRS. Okay, and they expect to get their payment every year. Okay, they they don't want to hear they don't want to hear none. But you ain't got it. You done spent it. So. The first person you need to go talk to is going to be a CPA, an accountant, some kind of tax professional, okay? They will then sit down and you can tell them what industry you're in. They're going to see your expenses. They're going to see, you know, how much you're making. And they're going to be able to advise you as to, hey, next year we should probably make the S-Corp election. Or, you know, hey, you're missing out on these deductions. Or, hey... You should be making sure that you're per like they're going to be able to guide you as to how to run the financial end of the business. Remember, you're great at doing hair. That's what you do. Your tax professor is going to be able to protect you saying, hey, you know, uh, I remember there was an attorney friend of mine. He had just set up a big um, personal injury case. And the uh, the insurance company, like, you know, well, do you want do you want us to mail this check to you today? It was like December twenty seventh. Do you want this check today, or do you want me to send it to you next week? And of course, he's like, oh, I, I I want it today. And I said, Why would you want that check? Like, what what you gonna do within five days? Right. If you do it now, you are gonna pay taxes on it now versus getting it five days later in the next year, and then being able to know, hey, I have a I have a big cash flow this year. Your tax professional can tell you how we can move some stuff around, what you need to do to kind of eat up them taxes. If you had a really good real estate year, like if you have a big cash flow coming in, what vehicles am I are do I what vehicles do I have to kind of bite that bullet? But if you don't talk to the person beforehand, if you don't invest in the in the consultation fee, like running a business is there's other expenses. You can't pocket all the money and then reap all the benefits. So going to a person like Patrice saying, hey, you know, I kind of, we had a really good, you know, we have a really good six months. I think this may be a big year. What are some things that I need to be doing? She can kind of explain to you some tax shelters, some, some different things that we can do to be creative to help you know uh to help whether this blow you about to get because when you go in and you used to getting a refund and you sit down you realize wait you want me to write a write, write a check to the irs with a comma in it yes baby yeah uh-huh yeah right and we and, 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 and i need this today like especially new like when i got my when i got my first six-figure tax bill i'm sitting here like I know you playing with me. I know you playing, you know, but you know, no, they ain't. When you, when you make money, you have a silent partner called the IRS. So, you know, all these different things are good. S-Corps are good and trusts are good and all this stuff is good. You need to understand, is it good for you and when is it good for you? So you de the first person you need is going to be a tax professional. The second person you need is going to be an insurance agent. Like you need to have business insurance depending on your industry. Every industry needs, if you only have an errors and omissions policy, you just need something out here to cover you. So when you start making money, start investing. Don't just go ball out. Invest in a tax professional. Invest in an insurance agent. Invest in some kind of business code to kind of help you kind of web, kind of help you structure your business, how you should zig and zag before you just get hit with, oh, I did all this wrong, or oh, I could have. I could have paid less in taxes had I gone to Patrice and she'd have been like, girl, you need to do boom, 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 boom. 
So you got to kind of pay for the advice to know what to do with the money. Because in running a business, even, even if you're the sole owner, you still don't own 100% and you're not going to get 100% of the profits. It's just and not going to happen. I understand. That's why we're here and, and trying to educate you guys. Because that's, that's to me what a lot of these newer uh, entrepreneurs think. Joy, like, Correct. We, we've been in the game 14, 15 years. It's like, baby, this sale that you... I had to break it down to one of my clients who was selling baskets for $100. And I said, so how much are you break, making off of that? She was like, well, maybe $30. And I'm like... Did you did you add even the basket? <laughs> right. The paper that you wrapping it up in. She was like, "Oh no!" I said, "Baby, that's cost of goods." Sold. Right, like, right. Are you adding the shipping fee? Right. So deliver it to them. I'm right. Like, I said, "So really, you done made ten dollars. You done did all this work, and you done made ten dollars." Right. $10. And then may go and give a discount when someone begging you. You can't do it for less. You didn't give a discount. Now, now you pay them to buy your basket from you. <laughs> so, yes, it's so much, so much uh, behind the scenes. So definitely contact Joy. I put her information in the um, in the comments. I also have her link up here in the uh, you know in the actual live right now. If you all want to join the lab community, um, Joy is one of our instructors in the lab community as well. So we do also have the, you can text the community, you can text the lab, um, which is 312-680-5468. And um, definitely reach out to Joy, um, you know, to set up your LLC or any kind of consultation, your contracts, everything. And then of course, I also put my information um, down as well if you wanted to speak to me further regarding um, taxes or the business coaching or consulting okay what's your so, Instagram name Patrice because I'm on I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put her Instagram information when I post this live so what's your Instagram page Patrice L Stewart okay so 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 for those who don't have a tax person, I am going to in the comments put Patrice's um, Patrice's name because your your tax person is gonna be like your your real spouse. Like that's the person that you have to be one on one. Like you have to just be one on one. Like so they can just you know hey brace yourself for the blow for this year. Okay, let me go ahead and brace myself and let me not get this Chanel. Let me not do all this because that has to go to the IRS. And so you want to make sure you have a good person who knows the law and then, you know, knows all the exceptions, you know, to the law so that you can kind of benefit the best because, you know, as our business grows, you know, you want to be able to keep most of that money and not have to give it to you know, your other partner, the IRS. Exactly. Exactly. I think we should do a series, Joy. Okay, let's do a series, girl. We should maybe do like a four-week series for them. We like do. Them. And we need we need bookkeeping, Patrice. Yep. We need... I got to get another person because I, I, I got to find another person because the person I had left the business and I was like, oh. oh the importance of bookkeeping... Yeah. The importance of filing a tax return. Yeah. We're going to get it. I'm, I'm going to get with you offline. We're gonna, okay. We're going to set up a, 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 a series for you guys. I like that. So that way you'll know kind of what we'll talk about each week. But but um, we know we gave you a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely reach out. Um, and yes, Tiffany, like you said, yep, a lot of people are quick to start the business, but they're not really set up properly on the back end. We got a lot of thank you, Joys, on this end. Okay. Um, the information. Thank you, thank you, thank You're you. You're welcome, welcome. And then when I, I'm going to, I'm not going to put Patrice's information in the comments because I always lock myself out of live. So I'm going to save this live. I'm going to post it. And then I will put Patrice's contact information for everyone on here to go ahead and get you, you know, book a little consultation with her so we all can get y'all numbers, y'all figures, have like a, you know, a tax buddy to kind of guide you through how we're going to, you know, process all the income that we're making. All 
right? Let's get these businesses in order. Let's get in order. And these tax write-offs together. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, Joy, for coming on. No problem. I'll, I'll text you after this so we can uh, work on our... Uh, our series? Our series. Okay. I got you. Bye, everyone. Arnetta, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you, Arnetta. She said, I just completed my monthly bookkeeping. <laughs>